just relax, will you? <laughs> we're just trying to have fun. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times interviewers ruined interviews. Your foot's I mean, starting to jump a little bit. You better get to your next question. For this list, we'll be looking at the times when interviewers asked inappropriate or unfairly invasive questions, behaved badly with guests, or exhibited otherwise problematic behavior. What's the worst thing you've seen an interviewer do in an interview? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. David Letterman with Janet Jackson after her participation in that year's Super Bowl halftime show set off a firestorm of controversy, Janet Jackson was understandably looking to move on from the incident. I, I, I don't want to relive any of that. All right. I mean, you, I, you don't mind if I ask you some questions about it, though? But it was a topic that many refused to shy away from, including David Letterman. When Jackson appeared on The Late Show to promote her new album, Demita Joe, the questions focused on the Super Bowl incident. This was in spite of Jackson saying she didn't want to discuss the matter. How did it happen? What, what exactly transpired? Dave, there? you're going to make me relive this. I, I, I want to put all that behind me. Not, well, I truly not, do. well, not I me. Letterman appears incapable of heeding her request and moving on. It's agonizing just to watch and see how uncomfortable Jackson is about all this. You know, there, there are more important things to focus on in this world. War and... I know you homeless. don't mean that. We can't even imagine how she felt. Number 9. Ellen DeGeneres with Taylor Swift Taylor Swift's music focuses heavily on her romantic life, but that doesn't mean it's okay for interviewers to ask nosy questions. When Swift appeared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show in 2013, host Ellen DeGeneres was anything but generous. You were here with your boyfriend, Zac Efron, last time. How's he doing? Um, we actually never dated. Yes, you did. She insisted that Swift and actor Zac Efron had been in a relationship, when they had not. Swift repeatedly asserts herself, but DeGeneres continues to ignore her. Let's talk about your number one hit, where we are never, ever, 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 ever gonna get back together. <laughs> Is that, who's that about? Here's what I'll do, you don't have to say. I'm gonna show pictures, here's a bell, and you ring it when, when, oh my God. She then makes Swift take part in an awkward game focused on Swift's love life. Swift even appears to break down in tears at one point. What are you doing to me? Come up here, you put like a different dude up there on the screen. She shows incredible composure in this interview, given how invasive DeGeneres was being. Number 8. Howard Stern with Anna Nicole Smith Howard Stern might be known as a shock jock, but there's a fine line between being shocking and just being plain insensitive. For some reason, she doesn't think she's heavy. Right, right. that's a for sure. That, that's the other strange thing, that Anna doesn't recognize that she's a big girl and maybe she don't wear belly shirts. When the late Anna Nicole Smith appeared on Stern's radio show in 2002, Stern and his co-stars made some very insensitive remarks about her body. I, the way you dress and stuff, I don't think you're aware that you're a heavy set woman. That's what I said. I know I'm a big woman, so yeah. what? So I was guessing your weight. He even tried to get Smith to weigh herself on air. Smith refused over and over again, but the topic should have never come up to begin with. It wasn't the first time Stern had crossed the line with his questions. Why would you want me to get on this I'll tell you so why. you could humiliate me? No, no, that's not humiliating. I think you should be proud of what you weigh. And it certainly would not be the last either. Number 7. Krishnan Guru Murthy with Robert Downey Jr. Some interviewers are so rude with their guests, we expect the guests to walk out right there. That's exactly what Robert Downey Jr. did during this interview with Channel 4 News presenter Krishnan Guru Murthy. What do you think of the obvious parallels being made between you and Iron Man? Um, at this point, it's natural, but I, you know, if you'd asked me in the first Iron Man, I'd be like, that's me. And now I'm realizing I've realized that, uh, well, it's, of course it's not. During an interview promoting Avengers Age of Ultron, Guru Murthy began to press Downey Jr. on a past interview response and referenced Downey's father and previous substance abuse issues. Uh, are we promoting a movie? Downey becomes visibly irritated by the change in tone and cuts Guru Murthy off, asking what exactly they're doing. The interview ends right there with a friendly, bye. Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. I mean, Bye. 
Even Iron Man's suit isn't strong enough to get through that interview. Number 6. Oprah Winfrey with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen Already inappropriate questions become even more inappropriate when directed towards younger guests. People are going to write what they want to write. I, we try not to read the good or the bad mm -hmm. because it just kind of comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. You know, either you're too fat, you're too skinny. When Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show in 2004 to promote their movie New York Minute, Winfrey asked the 17-year-olds about their clothing size. They what size are you, by the way? Size? Yeah, I and always I'm like to really know. Sure. Sure. I you're not sure? Girls and, oh, you know. that's so interesting. The two immediately seem to be taken aback by this question, and for good reason. The Olsen twins definitely showed their maturity through how they handled Winfrey's insensitive questioning. That is so interesting. I'm like obsessed with size, and you're like, <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. if we, we were if obsessed with our size, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be. I don't know, a different yeah. story. We all the interview redrew attention on TikTok in 2021, with many users expressing their shock about how tone-deaf Winfrey's behavior was. Users also noted how uncomfortable the Olsons appeared. Winfrey is known to be a great interviewer, but she should have known better. Number 5. Wendy Williams with Laverne Cox it's just common sense to not ask people intrusive personal questions about their bodies, but Wendy Williams apparently didn't realize that in 2014. When Orange is the New Black star Laverne Cox appeared on Williams' talk show, the host asked her about what it meant to be transgender. Transgender people's experiences are really different. It's an individual experience, so there's no one like sort of um, blanket transgender experience. So it's really about listening to individuals in terms of who they are and accepting people on their own terms. While that's obviously fine, unfortunately, this soon led to Williams asking Cox about her body, which Cox quickly redirected the conversation away from. They're tasteful, whatever, whatever's going on there. Thank you. I show you know I off stage I can talk off camera I can talk to you about. It. No one expects Williams to be a gender expert, but she seems quite insensitive about these matters. They think so often when trans people's experiences are talked about. We always far too often focus on surgery and transition, so yeah. I don't talk about that. But I'm I'm very happy with the situation. Cox displays plenty of patience during this interview, but she shouldn't have needed to. Number four, radio crew with Sean Mendez. A great interview doesn't need to be anything more than an insightful conversation, but some people try to add a bunch of unnecessary drama instead. In an interview with New Zealand radio station The Edge, pop singer Sean Mendez was asked some very uncomfortable questions by the hosts. We've got a bunch of questions here. Um, some very, very invasive questions. Questions that we'd never normally ask ask you. Sure, so or, he's gonna get zapped like crazy. Well, <laughs> now, granted, this was partly shtick, and Mendez could avoid the questions, while one of the radio crew got shocks. Sean Mendes, what is the uh, number of sexual partners you've had? Oh, not gonna happen. However, Mendez shouldn't have been put in that position to begin with. The combination of invasiveness and manipulation was disconcerting. This is horrifying. Yeah. Oh, this is well, your fault. You could have just answered. You're gonna be scarred after this. You could have just answered, man. Physically and mentally. We hope Mendez was able to find interviewers who treat him better. Number three, Ellen DeGeneres with Mariah Carey. Another basic aspect of conversational etiquette is not asking someone if they're pregnant, but Ellen DeGeneres flagrantly defies that rule in this excruciating interview with Mariah Carey. DeGeneres asks Carey about the rumors that she's pregnant, which the singer does not want to talk about. The other thing is that people are saying that, uh, that you're pregnant. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. <laughs> the daytime host then presents Carey with champagne as a means of further manipulation. Carrie appears visibly unnerved during the experience and calls out the inappropriate nature of it numerous times. Let's just toast with champagne and decide Wait, if, they've been uh, saying that since we... Remember, pregnancy is an incredibly personal and private experience, and if you think a question might be inappropriate, it probably is. This is peer pressure. pressure. You see what Ellen is doing? This is peer pressure. Number two, Jimmy Kimmel with Megan Fox. Should there be mandatory sensitivity training for talk show hosts? It would help to avoid more situations like this. In a 2009 appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, actress Megan Fox tells a story about appearing as an extra in Bad Boys 2, when she was 15. I was wearing a Stars and Stripes bikini and a red cowboy hat and like six inch heels. And um, he approved it and they said, you know, Michael, <laughs> um, she's 15 so you can't sit her at the bar and she can't have a drink in her hands. Fox refers to an on-screen moment in which she's dancing under a waterfall. 
as being a microcosm of how Bay's mind works. It, yeah. it wasn't the best time to start making jokes, but that's the direction Kimmel then goes in. Yeah, well, that's really a microcosm of how all our minds work. We know he's a comedian, but he should have still realized when to suspend the humor. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. David Letterman with Madonna There are plenty of ways to open a talk show interview, but directing the person you're interviewing to kiss someone in the audience definitely is not one of them. I'm only here because there isn't a Knicks game. Don't get excited. Oh, come on! <laughs> Let's go kiss a guy in the audience. Why don't you go kiss Why the guy in the audience? Why are you so obsessed with my sex life? David Letterman's 1994 interview with Madonna is one of the most uncomfortable things we've ever watched. The pop superstar immediately appears displeased, and it doesn't take long for her to refer to Letterman as Incidentally, you are a sick <laughs> Letterman's questions, of course, are not all inappropriate, but the way he started off the interview was absolutely uncalled for. No, what do you mean? You mean because we refer to you periodically? We make jokes? Periodically? We... Yeah. <laughs> you can't get through a show without talking about me, or thinking about me. <laughs> Pardon Madonna's French, but we understand why she felt the way she did. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.